For over 50 years, the Chinese have been manufacturing, issuing, and exporting the Russian-designed SKS semi-automatic rifle. Originally brought to life by Sergei Simonov, it replaced the vaunted Mosin Nagant bolt-action rifle that had been in service since the 1800s. The SKS filled a desperate need to provide a modern, lighter, semi-automatic rifle to go against the more advanced semi-automatics of the Western forces. In particular, the American M1 rifle was viewed as the platform to emulate. Incorporating an internal magazine that holds 10 rounds of the now infamous 7.62x39, loaded either manually or via a stripper clip, the SKS saw fairly limited frontline service in the Soviet Union. Produced from 1949 until 1955, primarily at the Russian Tula factory, as well as some coming out of the Ishev's arsenal, the SKS quickly gave way to the legendary AK-47. The AK leapfrogged the SKS design by incorporating a removable, higher capacity magazine and a field service ability that is regarded to this day as pretty much second to none. In 1956, during one of the brief and tenuous periods of quote-unquote friendly relations between the Soviet Union and China, the Soviets moved SKS production tools, parts, drawings, along with Soviet manufacturing advisors to the Jane Shi Arsenal, aka Factory 26, in China. The Chinese loved the SKS for its lightweight, longer barrel, and supposed faster reloading times than the AK-47 given its internal magazine, and saw it as a great platform to go to battle with alongside the AK-47. Designated the Type 56, the Chinese have been producing the SKS in quantities ever since. From 1956 through to 1965, they were made purely to the original Soviet specifications and are considered as good as any Soviet-produced rifle although they still aren't sought after in the same way that the Soviet rifles are. Since 1965, many variations of the rifle have been produced by the Chinese, including some specifically for export that have less than stellar quality reputations. So what's the lineage of this particular Chinese Type 56 SKS? As with most firearms, the serial number and markings tell the story. Looking carefully at the barrel, you'll see that it carries the triangular marking with the number 26 inside it. This designates it as coming out of Factory 26, the Jane Xi Arsenal, in China. To the left of the factory designation is the serial number. In this case, it's one alpha character followed by four digits. The combination and placement of the factory designation, along with the specific singular alpha character followed by only four numbers, does designate this particular SKS as relatively unique. It's a true Sino-Soviet SKS meaning it was produced in the first half of the year in 1956 under Soviet oversight utilizing original Soviet parts. If the serial number is anything other than an alpha character followed by only four numbers located to the left of the triangle with the 26 inside, it's not a true Sino-Soviet SKS. After the first half of 1956, the Chinese started utilizing their own serial number schemes from adding additional digits to changing the Chinese characters as well as many other variations. So this particular rifle has the honor of being a true Sino-Soviet SKS that was issued for military service. It is a matching numbers rifle, meaning all the parts are original, including this totally battered stock. Serial numbers are on the carrier, bolt, top cover, magazine, trigger guard, and buttstock. All the metal on this SKS is in excellent condition, which is surprising given the condition of the stock. It also has the advantage of having a chrome-lined barrel, which wasn't used on most Soviet versions. The rifle itself is fantastic to shoot. It utilizes a gas piston-driven action, very similar to the AK, although Kalashnikov will try and tell you differently. Nearly all firearms are more accurate than any shooter is, but I find this rifle very easy to get on target, and because the recoil is fairly light, it's pretty easy to reacquire targets quickly as well. It has a standard feeling military style trigger, meaning it's a bit heavy, but it's a very clean break. I find the safety, while effective, a little weird, but it works. Some of the things I really like about this rifle is its relative affordability, the parts are plentiful, it has a very robust rugged design, and it shoots the readily available 7.62x39 round. If you like, there are kits that will modernize and or sporterize the SKS, turning it into a quasi-AK-47 variant or even a poor man's bullpup design. Me, because it's a numbers gun, I'll leave this one in its original configuration. 
In my arsenal, it's a shooter. If you're looking for a military surplus rifle that's pretty easy to find and fun and economical to shoot, I have to recommend the SKS. In this case, scoring a true Sino-Soviet military issued numbers rifle is a bonus for me. As always, this is Crucible Arms and I thank you for stopping by.